Hi everyone, welcome to session 13 of uh, ServiceNow CIS IRM exam preparation. So he, until now we have talked about RAM uh, and the uh, roles in that. Now we'll talk about factor types. So we have these factor types. One is manual factor types. So it requires human responses because questions are subjective and difficult to determine based on data. Then you have automated factors automatically phase data from service node tables or databases or database and from publicly available data next we have automated scripted factors uses scripts to determine how factor will fetch data which is then used to fill in the husband responses when you have group factors are manual or automated that are grouped to create a combined score each assessment is comprised of individual questions defined in ram called factors and each has its own contribution Factors can contribute to either numeric, numerical risk score, qualitative contribution, or used for calculating ALE, which is quantitative contribution. Factor contribution type can be qualitative, quantitative, or both. Factors cannot be grouped until they are published. Then configure RAM beyond factors. So all that is mentioned here. So we'll look at some examples of factors. So let's go to group factors. So we have control effectiveness as one example, and it maps to RAM, which is your business RCSA. State is published, qualitative weight in 100, factor contribution qualitative, formula for qualitative score is product. And then you have factors, design effectiveness, operating effectiveness, there are two factors. Qualitative transformation criteria, which tells you like how do you map that uh, into a score, and then you have yeah all of that, right? So basically, this is a group factor which has a combination of two factors, two manual factors. Similarly, we look at a manual factor. So we look at likelihood as an example. So here we have. Uh, Qualitative as a factor contribution, and then user response as option. So rare, unlikely, possible, likely, almost certain. And we have a guidance in terms of how to choose that. Similarly, we look at automated factor, which is failed indicators. So this is directly picking up from the indicator table. And if you see here, it's aggregating control failed indicators. And it has a source coming from SN Advanced uh, Control Indicator Performance Table and so on. And finally, we have Automated Script Indicator, which is calculated based on APIs and so on. Right? There's a script here which is doing all the work. So it's basically looking at uh, control tests and so on. So that's that. So next we talk about configuration beyond factors. First is enable advanced risk assessment. So these are all properties under advanced risk assessment. So let's look at that. Properties. Yeah. First, we have migration, then define risk appetite as risk appetite. Uh, let's click here. <clears throat> so we have options. One is risk appetite only, risk appetite and risk tolerance, and none. Uh, the property name is uh, SNN score risk advanced, risk appetite scale. Then you have migration, which is, then you have express risk appetite limits in qualitative value or quantity of both. The property is SN risk advanced risk appetite analysis. Then you have number of days before which an email should be sent to review to review risk appetite, SN risk advanced risk appetite review notification. Then finally migrate to metrics from indicators. There is yes or no. So this is SN risk advanced migrate to metrics from indicators. So that's that. These are all the properties. And then migration will affect risk entity risk statement tables. 
install GRC advanced risk assessment does not automatically enable ARA. Classic rule, risk administration class rules. Yeah, class rules table and class are fields and class rules. Class rule assigns classes to entities. After class rule is created, run GRC profile creation. Risk form classic versus advanced. On classic, you have con assessment, scoring, response sections, calic layered score field. So it looked like it's looked like this basically. So you'll have calic layered score, assessment, scoring, and response. These are your tabs and uh, field on the classic risk. Next on advanced, you'll see assessment summary. So so you'll see assessment assessment respondents this is your uh, advanced then you'll have and similarly you'll see that some of the uh, tabs are removed like assessment scoring response are gone uh, so. So in classic risk, you can see that in response tab, you have all these fields. And you have in scoring tab, you have all those fields. In assessment tab, you have all those fields. And once we migrate to advanced risk, all risks and open a risk so the previously we have seen the screenshots of classic risk which look like this now there's a view for advanced risk which looks like this right so if you, if you compare you'll see that uh, in classic risk we had class calculated score we had assessment scoring response tabs but if you look at the advanced risk, then you see assessment summary. That is one thing that's coming up. At the same time, we don't see the calculated score anymore. That is not there, right? That's the difference uh, when you see, when you migrate to advanced risk. And then assessment summary, you'll see the RAM, which is the methodology used. and then uh, yeah and if multiple methodologies are used for risk assessment system picks default methodology for selected entity class which means uh, in entity class we define the default methodology so i'll show you where it is and it picks up from there if multiple methodologies are assigned If you look at the class, so here the primary risk assessment methodology is enterprise risk management. So that will appear in the risk uh, record. That is that. So that's what we see here. Then we talk about uh, uh, yeah. risk form. We talked about it. Uh, RAM configuration, set assessment context. Assess and assessment can yeah, assess and assessment can assess a risk scoped with entity or any service no record. This is the key aspect here. Entity or any service no record. Application entity classes if if assessing a risk select entity class to use this ram primary ram is set to entity class records table appears where assessment field is set to object right so basically you're configuring the ram so what we are saying is if you go to ram here we have few options available so we're talking about those options let's change the application scope so we can see grc advanced risk <clears throat> so 
So RAM configuration has various steps. We're talking about the first step, which is setting the assessment context. So as part of that, uh, trying to see what options are available. So let's make a copy of this so we can edit it properly. So assessment context is a section here, as you can see. And here you can define like whether it is assessing a risk or uh, a table, that's that. And then we have uh, RAM configuration select assessment types. So here we are specifying what is the assessment type, like inherent risk or control effectiveness or residual risk. And then we have enable risk response and target risk also. So when RAM template is defined, it can be included into a single assessment type or any combination of three available assessment types. So we have three assessment types, inherent, control assessment, and residual risk. So we have that. Uh, RAM configuration reference information. So here we have <clears throat> so reference information under this we have show related risk events, show related risk indicators, open issues, previous assessment. We have four options. And then we have uh, other configurations where you have advanced reminders, overdue reminders, copy previous responses, allow overhead of results, configure section terminology, risk identification from library ad hoc or both. That is that. And then roll up configuration. Let's see. Here we have calculate ALE based on maximum, some average minimum, calculate score based on average maximum minimum. Then you have uh, risk response calculation, available single response or mandate risk response on breach of appetite, specific conditions, breach of tolerance, specific conditions. RAM configuration on each assessment type record. So let's look at assessment types now. Start with inherent assessment. So we have assessment contribution, qualitative, quantitative both. Then you have scoring logic, product, some weighted average and so on. Uh, and then uh, Qualitative rating criteria, which is okay. translate risk total risk rating. So which is here. So which means okay that this is used for heat map setup, and you have rating in the risk uh, color style. Then you have control effectiveness, which that is for the different, okay, this is the inherent assessment. And similarly, if I go back, here we have uh, control assessment. So here we can say calculate based on control environment or individual assessment of controls qualitative scoring logic, some average minimum, all of that. And then you have factors which contribute to this assessment and qualitative rating criteria. Then we have uh, residual assessment. If I go back here.
So qualitative, okay, then you have qualitative score, heat map configuration again, then you have factors and then qualitative rating and heat map colors, all of that is here. And then you have building a RAM, right? So how do you do that is the next topics we will cover in the next video. Thank you.